Hi there, everyone, and welcome to Paper Wishes Weekly Webisodes. I'm Sarah Newman, and I'm so happy you're joining me for this episode of Saturday with Sarah. Today, we're playing with the Our Way supplies from our friends at Stamperia. This collection has gorgeous and really unique imagery featuring florals, travel, and a friendship theme. So I want to show you this pack of 10 double-sided 8x8 pattern papers, and I think this will give you a great idea of the style and images in this collection. So I'll just be flipping through here, and you can take a look. Beautiful imagery, nice soft color palette. You've got some really nice kind of faux texture designs here that are so versatile to use. And speaking of versatility, as with many of the Stamperia collections, you also get some cutouts. Beautiful whether you're using this side or the reverse. So lots of versatility here, some more cutouts toward the back as well. Now to go along, we also have a sheet of coordinating rub-ons, which you can see here. Again, beautiful designs. There is also a sheet of rice paper featuring some beautiful script and some faux texture down here. And then to coordinate with these, you've got a package of 42 chipboard die cuts. Perfect for adding a finishing touch to your projects. Now everything is designed to make it easy to create beautiful handmade cards. So today I'm gonna to share a few project ideas with you and a couple of fun techniques. As you can see, we have a lot to explore today and I'm so glad you're here. Come play with us. Let's take a look and see just how easy it is to build a card with these items. Now I've started here with a standard hot off the press five by six and a half inch card blank and I've covered it with paper from the paper pack. Now these papers have a lot of nice large imagery which you can position and place on your card front. And this is a lot of fun to play with the arrangement, kind of depending on whether your card is vertical or horizontal, how much of the image you want to have on here, how much of that collage you want to show, and where you want all of those elements positioned. So here I've got this lovely bird in the corner, and then I've also taken advantage of this beautiful kind of map and text and kind of overlay with some postmarks and uh, it looks like a train ticket on here too and this beautiful collaged background. So I've really got a nice foundation and all I need to do is add a few elements for a complete look. Now I really like to add some inking around the edges of the card front just for a little bit of definition. And here I'm using the Prism Wild Mushroom ink pad. This is one of my favorites, you may have noticed. And this is just a great basic dye, nice soft brown dye ink pad. And when I'm inking around the edges, I kind of hold it at a bit of an angle in toward the front of the card or the paper and just kind of scuffle that off to the edge. Now you can add a heavier inking or lighter inking, just kind of depends on the look that you're going for. But it creates a really nice shadow effect. It's a quick and easy way to get some definition and a little bit more dimension on here as well. So that's with the Wild Mushroom ink pad. So once I've done that, then I can start to add some of my elements. Now, of course, you've got lots of die cuts to work with, and so I'm gonna start with a few elements from the chipboard set. So the pack has a lot to choose from. I've kind of narrowed some things down here with a couple of tickets and then this floral piece. So I'm just going to pop the floral element down here and then I'm going to use this, um, it looks like two bus tickets layered one on top of the other, and I'm just gonna tuck this kind of underneath here, like so. So I've got two pieces ready to go. And then I've got a little postmark, and I'm gonna pop that on top. Now those are the chipboard die cuts. Also included in the paper pack, is a sheet, and here's only a little snippet of it, a sheet of those wonderful cutouts. I love that they're all straight lines, so they're super easy to cut out, but you've got words and you've got some sentiments on here which are great for adding another little element. So I've got this one that says travel guide, and I'm gonna kind of tuck this under here, like so. And then I haven't glued anything down yet, but I can kind of scoot some things around here and for a little bit of softness, I've got a bow, just simply tied with some brown ribbon. 
and I would position that down on here. Now, the nice thing about this is that I've created a really simple kind of cluster collage image. Now, I'm working with the rule of uneven numbers, so I have one, two, three, four, five elements all together. I'm creating some balance because I've grouped this up here at the top corner, and that's going to offset this image down here at the bottom corner. So again, creating some balance. Now another nice thing to keep in mind when you're doing a collage is grouping not only uneven an uneven number of elements, but also to vary the sizes and shapes of your elements. So I've got some rectangles, I've got kind of a square, and I've got some more organic shapes here with the floral and of course with that bow on here too. So once I glue everything in place, I've got my card front pretty much ready to go. Now, let's take a look at the card inside. I'm gonna slide these elements off, and I promise once I glue everything down, you'll be able to see the finished card in the project gallery. But let's just take a quick peek at the inside. So here I've already decorated the inside with some of this beautiful floral paper, also inking around the outside edges. I've got another cutout from the paper pack, which is this postcard element, and the sentiment here. Then I have this bird chipboard die cut. Now I've also added a floral rub-on to the postcard cutout, and we'll talk a little bit more about rub-ons in just a minute. But I wanted you to see here just how easily everything comes together with such a beautiful color palette and elements that are so easy to mix and match and use together. So now that we've had a look at the basics, let's see some more cards. This card is also using the large paper design as the card focal. Now this entire piece from this foliage here, including the bird and then this beautiful shape down here, this is all printed onto the pattern sheet and I just positioned it on the front of the card and trimmed around the outside edges of my card front. Now the great thing about the coordinating die cuts is that they can be used to embellish the pattern paper. And you can see here that I've used these three floral images to embellish the rest of this floral design on here. And I've just popped those up on some foam tape so we've got a little bit of extra dimension on there. Now also on the card front, I've got the word friend down here and this is a rub on. So let's take a look at how to do this process. So here's the packet of rub-ons that you'll get in this collection. Nice, big, beautiful feathers. You've got some floral elements and some little birds as well. Super simple to use. So let me grab this cutout from the paper collection. And I'm going to take this little birdie. Now I've trimmed the bird out from the rest of the sheet of rub-ons. It's easier just to work with one. And you'll notice it's got that white backing on there. And all I need to do is just pull off that white backing, kind of hold this and play with the positioning again. So maybe I want that little birdie to go right there. And I'm going to pop him down, smooth him down. And then what I can do is just use a tool. I can either use my finger, quite frankly, or a, another rub-on tool. Um, that's really great to have on hand is your bone folder. So I've got a bone folder here and I'm going to use the flat edge of this to just burnish this little image down. Now you don't need to put a whole lot of uh, arm muscle in here. It's not an upper body workout, um, but a nice firm even pressure on that whole image. That's going to do the trick. And then what I like to do is just pull up a little corner of it slowly and kind of make sure that all of the image has transferred and then there you go. So quick and easy to do. Now getting back to our card front, let me grab this for you and we can take another look. Here again, I've inked the edges with that wild mushroom and just added a little bit of jute twine on here. You really don't need a whole lot more. Then for the card inside, I have a strip of this pattern paper with the edges also inked and a cutout from the paper pack. Makes a really nice inside card sentiment, plus a small collage down here of die cuts. This card is made using the center step cutting die, which I love for unique card designs. It's a really great card shape when you're working with large die cuts like the ones we have in today's collection. So here you can see I have a large circle die cut. 
This is a little bit bigger than four inches in diameter and this area here is just the perfect place to create kind of a spotlight for that cutting die. And when you open up the card, as you can see, it's just got such a cool and different effect to it. Lots of fun and a really fun kind of surprise. So let's take a look at how to put this together. So here is our die, as you can see, it is just one piece on here and this is going to create this folded effect here. Now the great thing about hot off the press cutting dies is when you flip over the package, you'll see you've got all of your folding instructions on here. So it's really easy to follow. I also like that this die is just one large piece. So I only have one piece to work with. It's going to give me my cutting edge. It's also going to give me my scoring marks on here too. So it cuts and it scores, which means that when I've got this all die cut, I've got all of my pieces ready to fold up just the way it shows on the package. So once I've got that done, I'm going to have a piece that looks like this. And I'm just using Hot Off The Press's five by six and a half inch card blanks, nice sturdy weight, and I can position that die so that I'm just reinforcing the crease line that is already in the center of the card. So that makes it really easy as well. So as you can see, mountain folds and valley folds and you're on your way. Now you can die cut this from any of your pattern papers or your cardstock. If you're thinking of using eight by eight pattern papers, as you can see, it's gonna come up a little bit short. So here's one of the eight by eight papers. And as you can see, it's just too short for that die. Doesn't mean that you can't still use those pattern papers though, and in fact, I did. So what I did for my original card is I die cut the base from plain white cardstock, and then I die cut a second piece from pattern paper. Now I'm gonna show you with an example of just plain cardstock here. And as you can see, this is an eight by, started out as an eight by eight or eight inches long piece. So it won't be a complete card, but it'll be most of the card. And what I can do then is apply some glue to the front of my card. And I do recommend that you use a glue stick rather than double-sided tape for this. And then take this piece, fold it up like you normally would, and just nest this together. And what you'll have once you get that nested in here, and this is why I recommend a glue stick so you're not fiddling with um, double-sided tape on here. Nest those together, score the lines up really well, make sure and crease those, and then you've got your front piece covered. Now, what you'll find is that you have a little bit of a border here. I like to just add either a dazzle or a little bit more pattern paper down here to cover that up. On the back, you'll have some empty space here. So. What I've done for my card is simply added a strip of beautiful pattern paper and a sentiment here. Of course, you could cover this bottom piece with a larger piece of pattern paper if you wanted to as well. So lots of options there. So back to the card, you can see how fun that this is to decorate. Super simple to do and a great idea when you have a lot of fun die cuts to work with. Now here I have some overlapping die cuts here as well as a cutout. Now the only thing you probably wanna keep in mind when you're adding your elements on here is that when you open the card, you may or may not want some of those kind of peeping through along here. So just keep that in mind as you're designing. And the card itself is pretty simple. So all I've done is add some elements on here for the card inside. I have a cutout message and I have a torn strip of rice paper. Now the rice paper is a lot of fun to use and it just adds a really nice extra touch on here. So let's take a look at how to use that rice paper. Now you saw the sheet before, it's got some words on it, it's also got some of that beautiful texture. I have a little torn snippet left over here and you can see that it's a nice translucent material. Now what I like to do is add it onto a sturdier cardstock base. I usually go with a white or an off-white, something light so that the print on here will show up. What I recommend is that you use a white acrylic glue like the Cosmic Shimmer Cosmic Acrylic Glue. Super simple to use and works great. So I'm gonna bring in just a little bit here 
and I've got a piece of plastic. Now I have an old paintbrush here. Now the bristles are wet. You'll also notice that they're quite wide, so I'm not working with a little tiny pointed brush. And I'm just going to get my wet paintbrush in here. And I'm going to apply the watery adhesive onto my cardstock. I could apply it onto that rice paper, but my luck, it would just get all stuck to itself. So I prefer putting it onto the cardstock base. Then just place your rice paper down and smooth it down. Now what I like to do then is come back and just make sure that the edges, especially those beautiful feathery torn edges, are all secured down in place. And then once you've done that, pop your brush back into some clean water so it doesn't get glued together and you can let this dry and you're ready to go. So again, with my card inside here, what I've done is simply glued this to the inside bottom of the card, waited for it to dry, and then trimmed around any excess. Super simple to do. Okay, now I've got one more card that I want to show you. And this one is also using the rice paper, but this time I'm using the rice paper to cover the entire front of my card. So the exact same process we just saw, only positioning this right onto the front of my white blank card and let the glue dry and then again trim around the excess edges. So I'm able to get this really gorgeous texture. I've got the writing on here. Now, the one thing that I have added on here are these beautiful, beautiful feathers. So these are all rub-ons from the collection. So we've seen rub-ons used on regular paper, but they can also be applied onto rice paper. Now, a couple of things I really recommend first applying the rice paper to cardstock before adding the rub-ons. So not trying to do rub-ons with that wispy piece of rice paper. Just make sure you got something sturdy on there. And also make sure that the rice paper and the glue is totally dry. Then you just need to add your rub-on as before. So let's take a look. I've got a piece here that is already dry, glued onto some white cardstock. And again, I've got my rub-on here. I'll use another little birdie. And let's just pop him down here somewhere. Again, smooth it down. And then I'm going to be using my bone folder to just come in here and just apply this exactly the way we did it before. So nothing different here. You do want to make sure that that glue is dry though before you start working with it. And then we'll just gently and slowly walk this up. Make sure that I've got everything off here. And then there you go. Super simple to do. And so that's what I've done here on the front of my card. Now, as you can see, I've got a small collage of some chipboard elements here. So all of these feathers are the rub on right onto that rice paper. Nice, smooth effect on there. And then for the card inside, I've got some more of that beautiful pattern paper. I've got another rub on here on one of the cutouts and again, a few more chipboard elements. And that is our last project featuring another gorgeous collection from our friends at Stamperia. I think you can see how much fun this set is to work with and how easy it is to create really beautiful cards quickly and easily. Now, a big thank you to our friends at Stamperia as always, and a special thanks to you for joining me today. We're really glad that you're here and we're so happy that you're a part of the Paper Wishes family. Do feel free to leave a comment. We love to hear what you think. Each item can be purchased separately and you can see them below. However, we've also bundled them into a creative money saver just for you. For the money saver, just see this webisode on paperwishes.com. And if you're watching us on YouTube, just have a look in the description box below this video. You'll find a link that will take you to our Paper Wishes webisodes page and you can see everything I just mentioned. If you enjoyed our video today, we'd really appreciate a thumbs up. It helps people to find our channel. And don't forget to subscribe. We create three to five new videos each week, so there's always something fun to inspire your creative spirit.